Hi, I'm back. I know it's been a while and I haven't been making quite as many videos recently. I've been a little bit busy, but uh, hopefully I'll have more time and I'll try to make some more interesting content for you soon. But today, since my channel's been around for about a year, I thought I'd do an interesting video, hopefully a special video that you'll enjoy. So today I'm going to talk about Mizu Shingin Mochi, or what some people are calling a Japanese water cake. So basically what it is, it's a new dessert. I don't know how new, I don't know exactly when it was created, but it became popular about one or two years ago. So maybe you can see it here, or maybe this just looks like a lump of something. In here you probably can't see it because it's too bright and I can't get the angle right. But basically what it is, it's just, it looks like a drop of water. Let me take it out here, I'll, I'll use my hands. And whoop, here it is. If you can see that, basically what it is, is it just looks like water. It's not only translucent, it's completely transparent, so you can see right through it. Well, maybe not, but close enough. <laughs> Anyways, this is really interesting, and uh, I'm going to not only show it to you, I'm going to show you how to make it. Uh, they call this Mizu Shingen Mochi, or uh, the company names it Mizu Shingen Mochi after uh, Takeda Shingen, who was a famous general, and this actual Mizu Shingen Mochi is a company trademark, so that's not actually the name of it. I don't know what it is. I guess they call it a Japanese water cake, but it is interesting and it's actually delicious too. So, enough talking about it. I'm going to actually show you how to make it. So, let's get started. To make Mizu Shingen Mochi, there's a few things we need. So one of the things we need is sugar. Plain white sugar is fine, you don't need any special type of sugar, any type will be fine. The next thing you need is water. So you need water, all you need is 500 milliliters of water. Um, I'm just using normal tap water, but I've heard of people using special water like spring water, you know, and uh, supposedly that makes it more delicious. So. Do that if you want, but the first time you make it, uh, you might want to use normal water so you don't waste, you don't make a mistake and waste your money on some tap water. But I've heard, or I'm saying bottled water, but I've heard it tastes better if you use some kind of like nice bottled water. But all you need is 500 milliliters. The last thing you need, the secret ingredient, is agar. So this is called like, cool agar. I don't know if there's a hot agar or why it's called that. But it's just, uh, I guess, normal agar. You can buy this in Japan. I had to order it online, but um, you can find this, I think, in some supermarkets. So if you find it someplace, uh, you can buy it there. If not, order online. It's not, it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive. I think this one cost me about the equivalent of 15 American dollars. I think it's like 1,500 yen plus 500 yen shipping. So it's about 2,000 yen or a little bit under 20 dollars, which is. A little bit expensive, but this is quite a bit of agar, so it's not like you can only make it once for that amount. You can make quite a bit. So, this is the secret ingredient. Now, let's get to how to make it. So first what you'll need is something like a scale, and you need this to measure the amounts. So the original recipe I found used uh, 15 grams of agar and 15 grams of sugar. I like mine a little bit sweeter, so I used about 17 grams of sugar and 15 grams of agar. And I tested this and it's okay, there's no problem with the consistency. It's slightly sweeter, but you know, it, even with the extra sugar it's not that sweet. but. I would do something in that range, so just as a baseline, 15 and 15. So measure that out and put that into a cup. Okay, so now I have my sugar and my agar in here. Um, I'm using it in this cheap plastic cup, and there's actually a reason for that. So the reason is you want to mix this up with the water very well because if there's it's difficult to mix the agar and the water, they don't mix as easily as you'd think. So you really have to get in there and stir it. And if there's chunks in there, when it congeals, the problem is you'll have chunks in there and it'll look, 
it won't look good. So you want to make sure you mix it very well before you, uh, you know, put it in the mold. Oh, also, I probably didn't mention here. I checked and I bought the agar in Japan, but I checked on Amazon.com and you can actually buy this in America. So if you're in America, I'm sure you can get this if you look on Amazon.com. In other countries, I don't know, but I'm imagining you. I I imagine you can find it other places too. So you know, be on the lookout. So this, this isn't some you know special food that you can only make in Japan. You can make this in your country. Anyways, I take this and I pour a little bit of water in here. I don't like to mix all of it together at once. I like to just put a little bit in here, stir it, mix it up as as much as you can. Then once you think, ah, I have it mm, mixed fairly well, add a little bit more water like that. Keep mixing and keep doing this progressively until it's mixed up and you don't see any particles of agar in there. So it's import important, important, it's important not to have any it's important not to have any particles of agar in there so keep stirring it until it's completely mixed so I, I won't bore you with my mixing so okay so I've mixed it as well as I could I don't see any big chunks in there and that's the reason I used kinda of like a clear glass so as you're doing it you can look inside and see if there's some kind of chunk floating in there because sometimes it's not at the surface so you can't always see it so that's why I like to use something clear but use whatever you want and after you have this take it get a pot pour it in the pot um, I actually have a little bit of water left from that 500 milliliters so I'm gonna pour that in also here we go like so now I'm gonna take this and put it on the stove and I'm going to heat it up until it boils. After it's boiling, I'll leave it on there to boil for about two minutes. Okay, after two minutes, turn the fire off um, and just let it cool down. I'd say maybe about 10 to 12 minutes. Let it cool down so it's not quite so hot. And then once you do that, that's when we use our spherical mold. So these are usually used to make those balls of ice that you put in uh, whiskey, but um, you can use them for this too. But you can use any type of mold, anything that will make a, a sphere. You don't have to use a sphere, you could make it like use ice cubes or something if you want and do a different uh, color or a different shape altogether. But I like the uh, spherical shape best. So basically what you do is you pour the uh, mixture you have, the agar, sugar and water in here, cover it up, and then stick it in your refrigerator. You should wait maybe about two hours or so and then after that it should be ready. It should be cooled and it should be solidified. So that's when you'll have your finished product. Once they're cool, take them out of the mold and you should have something like this. So you should be able to see it and it should look something like this. It should be fairly soft. It feels like almost it's going to break apart in your hand or it's going to shatter but you see it, it, it won't shatter. I don't know if, <laughs> if anything gelatinous can shatter but uh, anyways it won't fall apart although it feels like it's almost the consistency of like some like soft like silicon ball or something like that but this isn't how you typically eat it because it's not gonna have much taste so what you do is you take this put it on a plate or something and then we get something called kinoko. So kinoko is just roast soybeans that have been crushed. So it's like a powder. So I'll pour a little bit on top like this. So you can see it there. I don't know how well it's going to come off on the camera. Uh, hopefully it comes off well. But if you've seen Japanese sweets before, you've probably seen Kinoko. It's on lots of different Japanese sweets, like the original Shingen Mochi. Not the Mizu type, but the original Shingen Mochi has this on there. That'll give it a little bit of taste, but still it needs a little bit more, so we're gonna use something else too. That is Kuromitsu. Kuromitsu is just kind of a, um, I guess a gel made of black sugar. So it's just a syrup, black sugar syrup. So take a little bit of that. Put it on top. 
I didn't do such a good job. Do a better job than me so yours looks more appetizing. But <laughs> basically that's how it's uh, traditionally served. And then take a spoon out and enjoy. That's really good. And has a unique texture that uh, no other food has. So if you like that, uh, maybe tell me below, leave some messages, and oh, one more thing I should show you. I had a little bit of extra time, so as I showed you last year, I talked about content. So I actually combined these two together. I combined the content with the Mizu Shingen Mochi and some food coloring, so I made something um, that I like. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that I really like Dragon Ball. So what I made is Dragon Ball Mochi. So. As you can see here, it looks sort of like Dragon Ball. I, I'll admit, I messed up on the star a little bit. You can't see it so well here, but it's basically the shape of a Dragon Ball, so, eh. There you go. Try something like this yourself. I was also trying, going to try to make the uh, slime from Dragon Quest, but that was too much work, and I didn't have blue food coloring, but you can do it. And send me a picture or whatever, and if you have any questions about it, until next time, leave them below, and... See you. If you enjoyed that video, subscribe. Also, feel free to comment down below and check out some of my other videos here. Or is it here?